right, let's talk about last night's storms once again. We are talking about a much different scene last night. It was dangerous and even deadly. We have team coverage for you here at 10. Despite being rescued from a water channel near the strip, officials say one person did not make it and then later died at UMC. We're also learning more about a second body recovered in that same area. Our Katie Munch was there earlier. Yeah, Marie, this happened at a flood channel east of the strip, and we also learned a second body was recovered in a large pile of debris. And when we hear these stories, many of us ask, why can't people stay out of the flood channels? Well, I talked to one man who is shining a light on living in the underground channels. The monsoon weather has been relentless across southern Nevada. It's activated many life-saving water rescues and recoveries. Thursday night, one person was recovered from the channels but later died at UMC while a second body was discovered in a pile of debris. This tunnel goes right by the airport, so we're going <clears> to <throat> enter down, down where we know people are living. Robert Banghart and other members of a foundation called Shine a Light will walk the depths of the flood storm drain system Saturday morning to check on others who call the tunnels their home. The monsoon season is a little different because it's so concentrated in a short amount of time and it's very heavy, which is not the usual for Las Vegas. But we offer a, a pathway called the iPath, which is instant placement with access to treatment and housing. So we offer a real way out when they're ready. It's an environment Banghart knows all too well. As an addict, he slept on the streets before going underground for shelter. I was at my, my lowest in my entire life. You know what I mean? That, I can remember the day that I looked at my tunnel for the first time. It was like I was buying a new house. After three years, it took a beating for Banghart to find the light. I was attacked by three people. I was hit with an ax, they hit with a pipe, they stabbed, you know, the whole thing. And they left me for dead on some train tracks. Banghart says he died that night before doctors could revive him. I was in the hospital for a month. I was in life support for three days. I had to learn how to walk and talk. I, I had a broken jaw. They couldn't they couldn't uh, wire it shut because I had swelling of the brain so bad. Banghart says members of Shine a Light who share similar stories supported him through his recovery. And now he returns to the underground flood channels to shed light on others and possibly show them a way to a brighter future before dangerous floodwaters or worse, a brutal attack gets them first. You know, people are looking down on them. There's a lot of guilt and shame, you know what I mean? And, and a lot of fear. So if I'm kind and I'm kind and I just approach them on a level, if I sit down with them, if I hug them, if I shake their hand, if I remember their name and continuously and continuously, like eventually they can't really argue with that, right? Over time, eventually they get desperate enough and they, they can't argue with what we're saying anymore. And so far this year, Shine a Light has helped 210 people get off the streets. And we know people who live in the tunnels most likely aren't watching right now. So Banghart says that if you want to help, you can step up and help this community by donating or volunteering. We've included that information on our website. Hi, everybody. I'm Reed Cowan from News 3 Las Vegas. We want to thank you for checking out our YouTube channel. Remember, you can always see more of our videos by clicking on the video links. And also don't forget to click that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any of our YouTube updates. Thanks for watching.